Say, everybody, guess who? Cardinal Timothy Dolan here. And I'm honored to just give a, a few words of bragging and gratitude for our beloved Catholic schools. Look, the 2020-2021 Archdiocesan school year was one that saw everybody associated with our splendid Catholic schools step up and accomplish what so few in education around the rest of the country were able to do. Think about it. We opened our doors safely and on schedule. We taught our faith-based, character-based curriculum in person. In a time before COVID vaccines with sky-high positivity rates and no end in sight, our pastors, our principals, our faculty, our staff, our parents, our volunteers, our benefactors, and with the astute planning of the school's health and safety task force, we crafted the best, safest, and most efficient way to run a school system in the entire country. Now, look, unfortunately, our, uh, our great Catholic schools are far too familiar with adversity. You know that. But as Catholics, we know that relief from fear and anxiety is always only a prayer way because Jesus, who's the center of our Catholic schools, Jesus is right there next to us every step we take. So when we're armed with that faith that we effectively pass on to our kids in our schools, when we're pushed by determination, staff and students alike masked up, showed up, they distanced, they filled out endless farms, they took temperatures. Oh, we all know the drill. We're exhausted by it. But they did that every day. Why? For the greater good, so they could be together to pray, to teach, to learn, to grow in their beloved schools. That spring, our eighth graders graduated, prepared for secondary education all the way. 99% of our impressive high school seniors graduated as well, with 98% of those young women and men accepted into college. Oh, we mustn't fail to give thanks. Thank you to our benefactors, our dear friends whose gifts and influence have made it possible for us to do all this, to make it through another year especially one as, as challenging as these past years have been. Thanks to you donors. Thanks to the tireless work of our administration, led by Superintendent of Schools Mick Deegan. We were able to acquire the necessary technology, equipment, and health-related staff in order to safely open our schools and remain open with a transmission rate far below 1%, even while the pandemic was raging around us. All throughout this uh, I hope, once in a century crisis, our schools continue to improve upon delivering a rigorous academic curriculum guided by the teachings of Jesus and his church. Oh, what a blessing it is to report that uh, our Catholic schools continue to succeed in their sacred mission in the face of every challenge thrown our way. So I hope you know that this success is a direct result of God's grace and your generosity, love, and devotion to the church and the family she serves. So just hear me say thank you. May God continue to bless our great Catholic schools. Our thanks to His Eminence Cardinal Dolan for that blessing and his welcome to this look back at the 2020-2021 school year for Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of New York. It was a year of unprecedented challenges, which is saying a lot given the previous academic year ended with buildings still closed and empty after more than three months of lockdown due to the global COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, one could say the 2020-2021 school year began in July, as pastors, principals, and teachers, led by the School Reopening Committee of Health and Safety Task Force, undertook the critical mission of making our school buildings safe in order to welcome back students for in-person instruction in September so we could indeed move onward safely together. When the 170 schools across the Archdiocese did reopen on time, they welcomed 53,507 students, with the vast majority of students opting to return to the classroom, while a number chose the option to continue to learn from home. Remember, the first vaccine distributions were still months away. In many cases, our Catholic schools were the only ones in their area open for in-person learning. Nowhere was this more evident than the city of New York, where public schools remained closed and fully remote. The opening of school in September of 2020 
um, was really the culmination of many, many months worth of work. I, I should mention that um, the Catholic Schools of the Archdiocese of New York opened in September of 2020 and never closed. Unlike the public schools and the government schools throughout the city and state, our schools were open. And they were open primarily because of the work of our pastors and principals, but also because of the dedication of our teachers who prepared themselves for the opening in September, and the fact that our parents trusted that when they turned their child over to our care in September of 2020, we were gonna take care of them. And we did throughout the entire school year. Our schools were heralded across the nation as a model for all schools, including public and government schools, as how one should reopen safely, how one should open not only safely, but effectively. And I should also say that um, excellent teaching and learning went on during that school year. In the midst of the pandemic, we tried to keep our children isolated from that which was going on outside the building so that when they did come to us safely, that they were able to learn in a supportive and a fun environment, which is really what learning is all about. We provided remote learning for those parents who wanted their children to learn at home. And while the number was not very large, it required that we were had to construct using technology the ability to live stream 2,100 classrooms all at the same time streaming out live instruction to the children that were home so the children at home could participate in what was going on in their classroom. Remote learning was certainly not the optimum. We wanted to make sure that what the children were learning at home was as comparable as possible because we wanted to make sure we didn't leave any child behind. Our schools are not islands unto themselves. They're part of a larger community. And there, was a, um, there were segments of our community that were very, very uh, infected by COVID. But there were reasonable regulations that the government was imposing on all schools that we needed to follow to remain open. One of them was that our children needed to be tested to make sure that we could mitigate the spread of COVID. The public schools were given free of charge all of the services, all of the resources, and all the testing to remain open. We asked for nothing less for the children of, of, of Catholic schools. And unfortunately, and sadly, in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, the city turned to us and said, no. They were turning their back on the children of Catholic schools of the Archdiocese. We felt strongly enough and committed enough to our parents and our children that we deserved and were entitled to that. So we brought the city of New York to court twice, and we won twice. And as a result of it, the city did have to pay for all of the COVID testing that we provided our children and teachers in our school system during the 2021 school year, which is why we were able to comply with the regulations and were able to stay open. I reminded um, Mayor de Blasio and then uh, Chancellor Carranza, Catholics are rule followers. Give us the rules, we'll follow them but give us the tools as well, particularly to keep our children healthy and safe. And we won in court and we were able to follow those regulations and we were reimbursed for the testing that we provided our children and teachers. The Health and Safety Task Force monitored things on a daily basis to make sure that we were following their recommendations. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we created uh, the uh, COVID response team. And the COVID response team was made up of medical practitioners and he public health management officials working for the Archdiocese of New York. And it was the COVID response team that guided our principals and our parents when there was an outbreak, when there was a positive case, reporting it to the local health agency, 
conducted close contact tracing to make sure that we could mitigate the spread. In fact, one of the CDC uh, doctors that we worked with referred to the Archdiocesan Catholic Schools COVID response team as a model for what other organizations around the country should do. For the very first time in many, many decades, the nation and the media recognized what we do every day and what we've been doing for 200 years. We were gratified and, and, and quite honored that uh, we, were, we were able to host uh, Fox News and Brian Kilmeade, who visited Good Shepherd School in uh, Upper Manhattan. And I think that, um, again, as I said earlier, it was a recognition by one of the largest, well-regarded news media outlets in the country that they came to one of our schools to acknowledge and to recognize the great and outstanding work that our pastors, our principals, and our teachers, with the support and the trust of our parents, had in our Catholic schools. And, and Brian was a wonderful, wonderful interviewer. Of course, the most important thing was that Cardinal Dolan was there. There is no one, both locally and nationally, who is a stronger proponent of Catholic schools than Cardinal Dolan. And that Cardinal Dolan was able to be interviewed by Brian um, and to share his passion and devotion about Catholic schools, but also gave the nation an opportunity to walk through the halls of one of our Catholic schools, to see the children, to see the hard work that our teachers were doing. The nation got a chance to see just how complicated, how difficult, but how overwhelmingly successful the work that our teachers and principals and pastors were doing in our schools. Uh, so I think that we were delighted that they were able to come and visit. What we experienced could never have been successfully navigated were it not for our faith, our relationship with something bigger than ourselves, which is the church. And I would say that during my almost 50 years as a Catholic educator and that of my colleagues, both uh, principals and uh, our teachers, all of that was uh, fueled and supported and encouraged because of our foundational faith in Christ and in the church. The first word in our name is of course Catholic. It's who we are. Linda Doherty is the Associate Superintendent for Catholic Identity. One of the biggest challenges we faced was the social emotional, uh, you know, part of a child and their development. And it was particularly difficult during COVID days. Many of them experienced loss, loss of family members or people they knew. Um, they lost their normal routines of seeing their friends, relatives, um, you know, all of that was turned off for them. So that was a problem that had to be dealt with. That came into the schools. The children were really very delicate and fragile over those different experiences they had. So coming into the building was important because they knew that First of all, we had prayer, and God knows we needed prayer at that time, but mostly they were in a community where they felt safe and secure. We stayed true to our curriculum in the sense of teaching the lessons. Many of them were done digitally, and we used many digital resources, videos. We live streamed masses when they couldn't all go as a school. You know, very often on First Friday, all of the students would attend a mass in the parish or some other kind of prayer service, that had to be changed. So it was all done virtually. Um, they were able to see one another. The students still were able to lead the prayer services, still were able to participate in mass, but um, it was done in a different way. But the values we've always taught were taught, the religion classes were taught, they prepared them for sacraments, trying to keep things as much on schedule and as normal as possible. Our teachers all take catechist certification courses. So that continued because those are online classes right now. The, um, the way the principals and the teachers were formed personally, spiritually, was through prayer at different meetings, as well as we um, individual regions had conference days. Jesus is with us and all we have to do is ask for help or he comes even when we don't even know how to ask for the help. He is there for us as well as the community of believers 
you know, that could be the people we live with, the people we work with, the students we teach. And as I said, if there was ever a time for prayer, it was during COVID times, during that school year. We're fond of the notion that our goal is to help our children get into college and heaven. The first part of that journey begins in our elementary school classrooms. And Stephen Marisitz is a director of the Office of Teaching and Learning. All of the credit goes to the teachers and leaders in each school building, in each classroom, who, despite the unprecedented times, were able to really leverage technology to maintain that consistency in the relationship with their students. And they were able to use platforms like Zoom and Google Classroom, which gave in part that sort of face-to-face -face interaction and then the communication via Google, while also leaning into our digital curricular materials like Discovery Education, which could be accessed from anywhere a child was learning, whether it was in person in the classroom or at home. And all of this was done under the guise of our consistent mission to ensure that we're meeting student needs and pushing them onward and upward to their next level of success. This year we had our teachers thoughtfully participate with social emotional learning curricular materials for themselves as professional development with Cognito, which allowed them to more strategically create space to bridge that gap and divide of who is learning at home and who is learning in the classroom and what does it mean that we're still one classroom community. It was also the opportunity for folks to use that digital platform like Zoom to connect with students but also with parents as well. How can we host parent conferences on Zoom? Shifting to newsletters just to keep parents up to date with what's happening. We also saw folks use tools like Remind for digital texting, pictures and videos on social media platforms to make sure that we are reminded that we are one school community and we can still be successful despite the global challenges. Cognito is a professional development but it's a series of professional development workshops for teachers and leaders on particular social emotional learning topics, such as how to support students through difficult conversations, through difficult times, what kinds of words, phrases, and actions might a teacher use to ensure that the student has those particular needs met, which when we think of academics in a classroom, we know how to teach math and ELA and science and social studies. But as going through a global pandemic, we also have to shift of, hey, no one has experienced this before. This is likely bringing up a lot of sort of unforeseen emotions, thoughts, and feelings that we've just never experienced before. So we wanted to ensure our teachers had enough materials and resources they could access themselves to support kids, again, under that guise of pushing you to your next level of success. The entire Department of Education found itself adapting to the COVID-19 pandemic, both within and outside of our school buildings. Veronica Jarek prince is the Director of Enrollment Management. The challenge for us was that we couldn't bring families into our buildings, similar to the way that teachers couldn't have students in the buildings that were not native to the building. So we had to pivot to an online strategy. We worked with principals to develop online information sessions. We worked with them to, to create videos for their school, introducing the building, introducing their school community, showing their school and their students in action. Um, we created a PowerPoint template for them, which would be slides that were personalized for the school, allowing them to highlight the strengths of that school, the things that they really wanted to talk about, the things that would appeal to families and students to incorporate that video and then to allow for questions at the end of the video. So we could tape this, they could do it at their convenience, they could then send the video to anybody who couldn't come of the session, and that allowed parents to get a real experience of interaction with the principal, often with the teacher who might be teaching their children or at least was teaching the grade level of that group. Um, and principals responded to that beautifully. They went out of their way to create engaging presentations online and to uh, grab families where they needed to hear that the schools were going to be safe for their children. One of the 
things we were most grateful for last year was the interest we received from students and families who attended public and charter schools. We had over a thousand applications from that group in the higher grades, which we almost never see because those people are pretty locked into where they are. But because our schools were open and our students were learning safely and our outcomes were fantastic, we didn't lose momentum at all in terms of our student success parents became much more interested in the Catholic school option and explored us in a way that really allowed us to welcome them to the buildings and enroll more students from that population than we had in a long time. Our slogan last year was our schools and our hearts are open and I think that really captures the spirit of what we were doing in our recruitment effort last year. During the 2020-21 school year, the 43 independent high schools within the Archdiocese of New York continued their legendary work turning out young women and men ready to be productive members of society. With a 99% graduation rate and 98% of those students being accepted to post-secondary education. Our Catholic schools have a robust early childhood program, which in keeping with the increased national focus on quality early childhood education, have expanded and strengthened partnerships with New York City and Upper County School Districts. In Central Westchester, Dutchess, and Rockland Counties, new seats were added as our schools were awarded early childhood programs by local municipalities, introducing more young children and their families to Catholic schools. In the Bronx, the number of school-based educational directors doubled as programs in the Bronx prepared to expand to serve over 400 new three-year-olds. Special education remained a major focus for our Catholic school system, with special education classrooms continuing to provide students with their daily instruction in person, remote, or through a hybrid model as COVID-19 dominated the landscape. Special education programs continued to grow throughout all regions of the Archdiocese of New York. The average cost to educate a student in a regional Catholic elementary school was $10,375, while the average tuition was only $7,495. So much of what we do is thanks to the generosity of the Friends of Catholic Education, our beloved benefactors. In 2020-2021, the Office of Catholic Education Advancement raised $27 million for Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of New York, including vital funding for emergency tuition assistance and technology in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Two 501c3 organizations, Inner City Scholarship Fund and Champions for Quality Education, raise funds to help archdiocesan schools and support scholarships for eligible students who attend them. In 2020-2021, Inner City awarded over $14 million in need-based scholarship support for more than 9,000 Catholic school students. In 2020-2021, Champions awarded over $1 million to 126 elementary schools to implement new educational programs and complete critical facility improvements. It remains crucial to advocate for our schools at all levels of government, so we continue to work with elected representatives to seek publicly funded support for our Catholic school communities, especially as it relates to our ongoing response to the COVID pandemic, including providing nursing services to our schools. Our priority remains adopting a meaningful program to help parents pay tuition, just as lawmakers in 30 other states have done. We continue to advocate that federal, state, and local governments give our schools their fair share of federally funded programs. We continue to seek additional state funds for STEM and academic intervention services while safeguarding our schools against intrusive state and local government control. Thank you for joining us for this look at what was a historic year for Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of New York, one during which we continue to move onward safely. And we did it together as sisters and brothers in Christ, children of God, and we continue to soar.